So for many test takers, the word slope can be a source of confusion. So what do we mean by slope? Well, there's a very simple way to think about the concept. So first of all, the slope is just a number. And it's a number that describes the steepness of a line. So you could think about the slope as the steepness of a line. So what do I mean about the steepness of a line? What do I mean when I say that? Well, I have two graphs here. So let's call this graph number one and let's call this graph number two. Okay, so don't worry about any of these numbers, all right? Don't worry about them, just let the numbers fade away and just focus on the line right now in, in graph number one. So see this blue line right here. So I want you to imagine that this blue line is a hill. And imagine that you're gonna run down this hill. So I'm gonna draw a stick figure here and I'm sure that you're much better looking than my stick figure here, but just imagine that you wanna run down this hill. Okay, so now also let's look over here at graph number two. So let's shift our focus to this blue line at graph number two. And again, don't worry about any of these numbers. Just let the numbers fade away and just focus on the line. So let's say you also want to run down this hill. So imagine that this blue line in graph number two, imagine that that's also a hill. So which hill are you going to be able to run down faster? Hill number one or hill number two? Well, hopefully it's pretty clear that hill number two is going to be easier to run down. You're going to run a lot faster down hill number two. Why? Well, because it's steeper, right? So we can see that this line in graph number two is much steeper than the graph over here in line number one. So each of these lines, they're each going to have their own slope and they're going to have a different slope. So this is what I mean when I say that the slope is just a number that describes the steepness of a line. So that's the basic concept of slope. Have you ever heard anybody say that the slope is the rise over the run? Well, if you've never heard that before, that's okay, because I'm going to explain what that means here. And a better way to think about that is that the slope is the change in rise divided by the change in run. So in other words, the slope is the change in rise over the change in run. So what's rise and what's run? Well, on our graph, we have an x-axis and we have a y-axis. So right now, I am drawing a box around our y-axis. So the y-axis, it goes up and it goes down. So the y-axis, it goes up and down, or you can think about it as rising. So the y-axis, it rises and falls. Now, we also have an x-axis. So the x-axis is a run. So I'm putting a box around the x-axis right now. So the x-axis, it goes left and right, it runs. So we have our y-axis, which is our rise, and our x-axis, which is our run. So now we can write another formula, which is probably one of the most important formulas to know for the GED test period. Now, you don't have to memorize this, but you do need to be familiar with it and know how to use it. So first of all, this little m right here, this little symbol here, okay, it's an M, it means slope. So if you see the letter M, it means slope. Okay, so the slope is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. And again, this is one of the most important formulas to know for the GED test, or to know how to use it, at least, because you don't have to memorize it. But it's the slope, which is, again, this M means slope. So the slope is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And so remember how we said that the, the Y axis is the rise. So we see Y2 minus Y1. That's the change in the rise. And we see X2 minus X1. And that's the change in the run. So we can calculate the slope with this formula in this graph. So to do this, we need to pick two coordinates, all right, two coordinate points on the graph here. So we want to pick two points on the graph. So I'm going to use this point right here. And this is also really important to understand how to find coordinates on a graph here. So you always want to write your x coordinate first. And then you write the y coordinate second and any coordinate pair. 
So how do we find the x? Well, let's look at the point on the graph that I picked here. So we can trace down to till we hit the x-axis. So remember, the x-axis goes left and right. So where does this line, okay, if we take this dot and we trace a line down to the x-axis, okay, we see that we reach the x-axis at zero. So the x-coordinate of this point is zero. Now, at the same time, we're already on our y-axis because this is a four right here. This is five, this is three. So on our y-axis, this point right here is four. So the coordinates for this point right here are zero and four. So we also have to find another point on the graph. So we want to pick another point on this line here and we want to find the coordinates for it. So let's go with this dot right here. So for this dot right here, let me make another, let's write the coordinate pair right here. So again, we always write the x coordinates first and we want to put our y coordinate second. So for this dot right here, okay, on our x-axis, again, if we trace this dot, we trace a line down until we reach the x-axis, we see that we're at negative one. So the x-coordinate for this point is negative one. Now what about our y? Well, if we start at the dot here and we trace a line over till we reach our y-axis, we see that we reach it at two. So the y-coordinate here is two. So we now have two pairs of coordinate points. So next we want to use the formula, but how do we know which of these x's is x1 and x2? How do we know which one's y1 and which one's y2? So you get to make that up, so you get to decide. The key is that you just need to keep the ones and the twos together. So I can make this point, this negative one right here, I can make that x1. But if I do that, then I have to make this x2. All right, and since I made this x1, remember, you keep the ones and twos together, so this becomes y1 and this becomes y2. And that's a perfectly valid way to do it. Now, you can alternatively, if you'd like to, instead of making this x1, you can pick to make it x2, and that's perfectly fine. But if, you pick, if we pick this negative one to be x2, then the zero, we have to make that x1. And remember, you keep the ones and the twos together. So if this is x2, this has to be y2. And if this is x1, then we have to make the 4 y2. So again, you, you have to first, if you're finding the slope from a graph here, you need to first find two pairs of coordinate points. So you've got to pick two points on the graph here, and you've got to find what the coordinates are. So figure out those coordinates. Once you've got two pairs of coordinates, okay, you can pick whichever x coordinate you want to make x1, and x2. You can pick that, you just have to keep the ones and twos together. So for simplicity here, I'm going to make this x1. Now again, I could have just as easily made it x2. Remember, that's your decision to make when you're doing problem solving. Okay, but since I made this x1, I keep the ones and twos together, so I'm going to make this y1. Okay, so my ones are done here, so now I want to make this x2, and I want to make this y2. So now, all we have to do is just use our slope formula here. So we're gonna substitute these numbers in. So four is our y2. So we're gonna take four and we're gonna substitute it into our slope formula for y2. And we know that two is our y1. So we're gonna take two and we're gonna substitute it into the formula for y1. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our x's. So our x2 is zero. So what do you think we're gonna plug in here for x2? Well, obviously it's going to be 0. Now you guessed it. x1 is negative 1. So we're going to substitute negative 1 into our formula for x1. And so now let's do our calculation here. So again, this m symbol means slope. So what is our y2? Well, we know that y2 is 4. So we have 4 so y2 minus y1, what's our y1? Well, we can look right here because we labeled it, our y1 is two. So we have four minus two, and this is divided by x2 minus x1. So what's our x2? Well, we already labeled it, our x2 is zero. 
So we do x2 minus x1. And what is our x1 again? Well, we labeled it. Remember, our x1 is negative 1. So here we have 0 minus negative 1. 0 minus negative 1. Well, we've got minus negative 1, so we can just make that 0 plus 1. So you got to know your rules for subtracting negative numbers, but that's a topic for another video. So the point here is just 0 minus negative 1. We can just make that 0 plus 1. Okay, that's an explanation for another day, but just remember that. And so now what we want to do is we do 4 minus 2, which is what? 2. 0 plus 1 is what? 1. So we're left with 2 over 1, which is just 2. So the slope after all that work is just 2. How do you really maximize your score on the GED test? Well, you can start by making sure you understand how to calculate the slope without using a graph. And I think it's actually simpler to do it without using a graph because then you don't have to find the coordinates and there's less chance of error because they're already going to be given to you. So here's an example problem. I want you to test yourself here. Pause the video. Let's see what you've learned here. Find the slope of the line that passes through the point 17, 4, and 29. Ready? Pause the video. Give it a try. Okay, so let's go over how to do this question here. So we know that this is a slope question, and I've left the formula for slope. m, or slope, equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're given two pairs of coordinate points. So we know that we always want to write the x first. So let's label these. So 17 is an x-coordinate. 4 is a y-coordinate. 20 is an x-coordinate. 9 is a y-coordinate. So remember, the x-coordinates always are written first, the y-coordinates are written second. So, is 17x1 or is 17x2? Well, remember, it's up to you to choose. So remember, again, you pick whichever one you want to make x2 and whichever one you want to make x1. So I can make 20x2 if I want. So if I do that, then I've got to make, I've got to keep the twos together, so then I make y2, so 9 becomes y2. And so then I have to make 17x1, and I have to make 4y2. And you're going to get the same exact answer, okay, or I'm sorry, this has to be y1. So you're going to get the same answer if you do it this way as if you do it the other way. So you could make this, instead of making this x2, you could make this x1. But then you've got to keep the ones together, together so this becomes y1, and therefore 17 becomes x2, and 4 becomes y2. Now, it doesn't matter if I would have made this 20x1 or if I made it x2, okay, you're still going to get the same answer as long as you keep the 1s and the 2s together. But just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to do this, we're going to do it this way. So I'm going to make 20x1, but keep in mind if you made 20x2, okay, as long as you did everything else right, if you made 20x2, you made 9y2, 17x1, and 4y1, Okay, you're still going to get the same answer as long as you did the math right. But I'm just going to show it this way here. So we have our y2 is 4. So in our formula here, all right, remember, we're going to put 4 in for y2. So again, y2 is 4. So we're going to plug that 4 in for y2. Now our y1 we know is 9. So y1 is 9. So I'm going to take this 9 and substitute that in for y1. So y2 is 4, so we do 4 minus y1, which we just figured out is 9. So we have 4 minus 9 divided by what? Divided by x2. So our x2, remember that that's 17. So I'm going to replace x2 with 17. So we have 17, which is our x2, and we're going to subtract our x1. So our x1 is 20, remember? So we take this 20 plug it in here. So now we just have to do some basic math. So what's 4 minus 5? 4 minus 5 gives us, why did I say 5? 9. 4 minus 9 gives us negative 5. 17 minus 20 gives us negative 3. So we've got negative 5 divided by negative 3. And really, We've got a negative divided by a negative, so the answer is going to be positive. And you can just leave your answer like this, 5 over 3. There's no need to turn this into a decimal or anything like that. So the slope here is 5 over 3. So if you got that right, then awesome. Give yourself a pat on the back.
So this is the basics, but there's a lot more to know. So your next step now is to go test yourself on the basics with my GED math practice quiz. I've got a problem on slope in that. And then after that, you want to make sure that you're subscribed so you get the next video that I make on slope. Thanks for watching. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions. Good luck on your test prep.